Well, hey there, welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. This is Joe Van Cleve, and continuing with our series on reviewing every typewriter in my collection, today we're looking at the 1970s era Hermes 3000. And since this is a nice balmy autumn Sunday morning in New Mexico, I decided let's go outside and do this review somewhere a little bit open and scenic. But also, being Sunday morning, you know, in most communities there's going to be football, soccer, sports of some kind going on in city parks. So I had to find some place where it wasn't so crowded. But hey, we got a pretty good spot with a view of the Sandias off behind my shoulder. So let's take a look at the Hermes 3000. Well, I've brought out the Hermes 3000 today on the tray table that I normally use in my house, usually in my patio room for typing. And I've also brought along with it the endless roll of paper here, teletype paper, but the hard case for the Hermes uh, just slips on over the platen thusly and it has a nice handle, carrying handle that locks into place. It automatically folds the uh, spring-loaded carriage return arm down when you put the clamshell on. So let's look at the controls of the Hermes 3000. So starting in the upper left, there is a touch control, and it goes between one and four on the touch selector. And I typically like it about two. What this touch selector actually does underneath all this uh, plastic cover is all it does is pull up on a spring. It provides a various amount of force onto a bar, a common bar underneath that attaches to all the, the linkages underneath. So uh, next to the touch selector is going to be your backspace key, then your tab set key. Here's your tab clear. You can clear the individual tab that you're currently at. This is all clear. This clears all the tabs at once. Here's your margin release that enables you to go beyond the right or left margin. And this is your tab button itself. And then up above the tab button is the ribbon selector, ribbon color selector. So this is pretty neat on these typewriters. Uh, you have the stencil setting up on top, and then you have colored blue. It's actually the top edge of the ribbon. And then all the way down is red, which is the bottom half. And then in the middle, there's a yellow setting, which is actually right in the middle of the ribbon. So if you're using an all black ribbon, you can get three uses out of the ribbon, top, middle, and bottom. Or if you get funny with it, you can use a red-black ribbon and get kind of two-toned red-black letters, um, which is kind of cool. But I, of course, I usually use the top setting. Uh, it's a modern keyboard, so it has the number one and the exclamation mark. It's an American-style keyboard, of course. Shift and shift lock is here. It has uh, all the standard uh, keys you'd expect in a 1970s era typewriter, space bar, and these two green brackets were an add-on that I added because I had to fix the case, the top and bottom portion. There's a clip in here on the top part that clips into the bottom and it was broken. So this half of the case was loose and rattling whenever you type. So I put a machine screw through here and a rubber foot to support it and this bracket that keeps it clamped and since I had it on the left side I figured I'm also make it symmetrical and put one on the right side just to make it look good but that's basically it um, it has the plastic removable ribbon cover that reveals the whole basket type bars and ribbons and everything there okay on the left side of the carriage you of course have your carriage return lever which on these Hermes 3000s is very nicely positioned I would say Perhaps the Smith Coronas maybe have a slightly nicer carriage return lever only because uh, they're a little bit lower toward the keyboard where this kind of springs up kind of high, but it's nice and long. Um, the Hermes are known to have kind of an interesting uh, margin setting situation, and it's kind of similar to the magic margins uh, of some of the other typewriters in that you have a platen knob here. And then you have this white button that is the carriage release lever. It enables you to move the carriage between the margin stops. Then you have this metal lever that pulls forward. And for you might think that this is the carriage release lever, but if you pull on it, it's going to set the left margin to wherever the carriage happens to be positioned. So in the case of having the carriage in the middle, if you pull on that, boom, all of a sudden I've set my margin all the way over here, and I'm not going to be able to go any further than that. 
So the trick on this to move the margin back is you have to push and hold the carriage release lever and then press and hold the margin button and then you can move, move it all the way over to where the margin should be. So it's very similar to the problem as if you had pushed down the magic mar margin buttons on the Royals. So uh, it uses plastic um, platen knobs. I haven't had any problems with mine. Again, a plastic push button carriage release lever. This right here is your line spacing selector. One, two, one and a half, and two. And there's, of course, a position where the platen only moves a half space above the one. You have a paper bale that has a paper scale, it has the rubber rollers, and it has the red ribbon margin um, indicator for left and right position. So you have an indicator of your margins and they do adjust as you set the margins. Behind the endless roll of paper is going to be a paper table with an adjustable guide and the flip-up paper supports in the back. So the right side of the typewriter is essentially the same as the left, a mirror image. You have your platen knob, your carriage release lever, and your right, I'm sorry, right here, the right margin setting, which if you pull on it thinking it's the carriage release lever, it's going to set the right margin to wherever you're at. This right here is the tension knob to release tension on the platen rollers. And then down here you have a lock for locking the carriage. So there is a little bracket that sticks out right here and you have to pull this lock lever towards you and slide the carriage back to the left and it'll lock. To release it you're going to want to pull the carriage and push that down towards you to release the lock. Okay, So that's the right side of the margin. It's a fairly straightforward setup. Okay, when we pick up the paper uh, the ribbon cover, I mean, and remove it. <clears throat> so we see the uh, segment and the ribbon spools. The nice thing about these Hermes is they have this beautifully shaped arc, kind of a curve to the, uh, the tight bars, the way they're in the rest position. And the segment is very nicely formed. And so this, these typewriters have these guides for the auto reverse using the grommets. So they flip back and forth like that with the, when the grommets hit it. This, of course, is a, is a two-color ribbon. It is a, a basket shift or segment shift typewriter. So here is your shifting on that. And uh, so it's a very nice shifting experience. And this particular typewriter has a very beautiful typeface. Uh, it's just a really elegant uh, sans serif type. And I really love the style of it. And it types extremely well. Everything is very even and uh, no hiccups or, or glitches or anything of the kind. As for this machine, it's one of the best typing in my collection. Perhaps the very best. Only equaled by the other Hermes 3K. I would say where this machine fits into my collection is that it is probably the best typing machine of all, of all the ones I've ever owned. Um, you know, it has the kind of boxy plastic 1970s styling to it, but you know what? It is a heck of a good typer. The feel of this machine is so soft and yet not mushy. It's really pretty quiet. It's about the quietest machine in my collection. Uh, maybe that has something to do with the condition of the platen. But my other Hermes 3000 of the same body style, the one that I turned into the Naked Rider, which we'll cover in another episode, it's the same degree of quiet, even with the, the plastic case removed and just the mechanical chassis out in the open. Uh, the typeface on this machine is wonderful. The alignment is wonderful. Uh, everything works great with this machine. If This really is, um, if you had to have one machine, this is your desert, desert island typing machine. You know, it doesn't have the look of those 1930s, 1940s black typewriters with the round keys and the metal rims and the glass tops and all that, but boy, this thing really types. And uh, I really think this is, for mechanical typewriters, I have not tried every one, certainly. There's a lot of them that are harder to find here in my part of the United States. But for the ones I have tried, this is really 
absolutely one of the best typewriters and one of my favorite ones. So if you find yourself in the market for one good typewriter, I would really say a Hermes 3000 is a great typewriter. I really believe that they're worth every penny they ask and their reputation is well earned. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve with another episode of the typewriter video series. Until later, you have yourselves a great day and keep writing.